Look at futures, please. Left-hand side of the screen, we're looking at a modest gain, a tiny gain for the Dow, uh, modest losses for the S&P and the Nasdaq. Uh, our favorite dividend guy, his name is David Barnson. He's usually in California, but today he's with us in New York City. All right, I want dividend plays. Or unless you want to sort of say something about politics, what do you want to do? Well, I think that that railroad uh, strike deal, it, it's a good thing that they got right. it fixed. The last thing our supply chain needs is any more pressures. But uh, ultimately, I'm not sure that it's going to be a great victory for the White House. It would have been a loss if it hadn't happened. But I don't think it's going to be a positive that this thing got done the way it did. A lot of union people are really upset about the way it happened. Really? No, absolutely. Give me a, give me a stock that pays me a handsome dividend that will grow. Well, the thing I was thinking about when they were talking about the railroad uh, issue with oil and gas, and Warren mentioned it, you know, we transport way too much oil and gas with rail. One of my dividend picks is UMI, which is a midstream energy ETF, and it's about uh, 18 different pipeline companies. It's actively managed. It's uh, some Canadian, some MLPs, some U.S. pipeline companies. So it's a big play on the energy story of America. We need less oil and gas being transported by rail and more or by pipelines. It's safer, it's more economical, and so it's a great dividend story there. Good luck with that. Uh, we have an anti-pipeline president. Well, we? we do, but guess what? We uh, also have an energy secretary he appointed who admitted the pipelines are the safest way to transport oil and gas, and you need more terminals built to export LNG to Europe. Okay, so that's UMI, yes, capitals. Sir. What's it yield? Doing it? Uh, 5%, and oh. it grows about 8% per year. Don't worry about it. I'll take 5%. Yeah, I know, I know you much. will. I know you will. Now, you're going to, I wrote it down. I did. Uh, now, you're going to be with us for the whole hour, yes. so we'll get some more dividend plays yeah. later. Thank you very much indeed, David. Uh, take a look at Tesla. All right, Lauren, did I hear they're having trouble getting people back to the office? Yeah, because a lot of people were promised that they could work from home, and now they have to physically relocate to show up at the office. And Tesla just doesn't have enough room for them physically. So you have some of the workers showing up to the office, as they've been told, but then taking the calls outside for quiet. Uh, Also, employee morale is down big time. And yes, that has to do with the Twitter nonsense, too. But basically in June, Elon Musk said, you're coming in and you're coming in at least 40 hours a week or else you're leaving. And And they don't like it. A lot of them don't like it. And it's been hard, apparently, for uh, Tesla to hire because of that, which I doubt, because I think Tesla is a very cool company. David has been just jumping up and down on this. What do you got to say about Tesla back to the office? It's the biggest nonsense I've ever heard, ever. Of course, people would be lining up to work at Tesla. Anyone complaining about having to go back to work should be fired. If they don't show up, fire them. If they complain about it, fire them. If they go use their cell phone outside as if they don't have a desk to make a call, fire them. I'm tired of it. Get people back to work. Elon Musk has been a leader in this area, and plenty of people now in New York City have started to get their people back to work. Way too late, if you ask me. The law firms took about two years to get back to work, but Tesla's done the right thing, and these people complaining about it should probably say thank you and go on their way for their very good job and very good stock options. I'm glad we got that out of you this morning. I'm holding back. I presume that big tech is not doing well. That is accurate. Apple's down at 154. Amazon 127. Microsoft slipping below $250 a share. Staying on big tech, David's with me. Is this the group, big tech, is this the group that leads us out? I don't think it is, and I believe a lot of people are waiting for it to do so, but that would be a very contrarian thing. Historically, the the sector that was the leader in one decade has never been the leader the next decade. Really? And never once. And, and in fact, it's usually the opposite. It usually goes to the bottom of the of the pack, which is where it is so far. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, right now, the leading drop is in technology. Now, big tech has done much better than smaller tech and some of the frothier, more expensive type names. A lot of those names are down 70, 80 yeah. percent. But even in big tech, Netflix is down 70, Facebook's yes. down 60, and Apple, Google, Microsoft are only down 25-ish and so forth. Apple's done better. I think that um, they were just very expensive, and you're going to get a repricing. And on a go-forward basis with yields higher, I think value is going to outperform growth this decade, not just this year, oh, this decade. This decade. Yes, sir. Value outperforms growth this decade. Uh, Netflix got a boost from a financial for Evercore.
What did Mark they say Mahaney, about, actually, they say who comes on your program, he's yeah. actually raising Netflix to an outperform. So in his view, it's worth 30 percent more. So you could get three hundred dollars because of that new ad tier that's coming pretty soon. And that Netflix at two thirty two as we speak on the upside this morning. And if it hits three hundred, it'll only be down 50 percent from its all time high. OK, <laughs> let's not forget that. <laughs> Got that dig in there. Lad. OK, right. but let's talk about growth then when it comes to technology and some of these plays. Are you going to get 30, 40? percent growth and margins like you do in Apple with some of these value plays like railways, airlines, banks, etc., David? No, you're not. And that's the thing is the tension between a growth and value investor is the price you pay. So if you're getting 30 percent growth and paying 100 times earnings, you're overpaying for 30 percent growth. What about if you're getting 8 percent growth if and you're paying, paying 30 times earnings, 30 times earnings on a 300 billion dollar sales multiple? Yeah, that's the problem with Apple is that it, in its highest growth years, which it had from 2013 to 2020, it was trading at 16, 17 times, not 30 times earnings. So even by its own standard, Apple is just at a really big premium in valuation still now, even after this I drop. Think it depends on how you price growth and how you price earnings. But it, that's sales, always what yeah. it's about, is how you price growth, and investors tend to overprice it. God, all this technical stuff has my head absolutely <laughs> spinning here. But it's, I will move on. So you, how, you get this you, stuff. Uh, you know Susan, it. Adobe, which is way down, 12% lower, they're buying for $20 billion. I'd never heard of Figma. Or Canva. Or Canva, till right. today. And well, they, well, they well, have you ever heard company. of paying $20 billion for a design company? No. <laughs> you know who, do, who pays $20 billion for a design company? A company that doesn't respect its shareholders enough to pay dividends every quarter. No. Companies, oh. that have the discipline, now, companies that have the discipline of dividends don't do M&A deals like I, this. I will say that Adobe, though, did outperform in their earnings because they release earnings as well in this uh, acquisition. You know, we're having a livelier discussion <laughs> than usual at the but opening look, of when, the market. When, the market's oh. down, when it's down 12 percent, that's the market saying you're not just over overpaying, you're overpaying substantially. And there have been deals that people thought were overpay. Microsoft with Skype, Google, and AOL? YouTube. There, well, but that was the worst overpayment of all time, yeah. right? The it AOL sure Time was. Warner deal. I was there. So this Adobe deal to me is the irresponsibility of corporate boardrooms when they get bored with too much cash on hand. And so they start overpaying for a design company for $20 billion? Dear Lord. For a dividend guy, you got some strong opinions. Oh, that's <laughs> you, you really you. But we just, like it. I'm just getting warmed up. We like it, son. Okay, okay. That was a sufficiently long explanation <laughs> so that I have no time to follow up at all. And although David here is rolling his eyes aggressively, uh, yeah, why, we cannot though? go because, to it. Because of... Uh, <laughs> we're we're no, out of, we no, can't no, you can go gamble in <laughs> Vegas oh, in Atlantic City and they give you free beverages. All right, here we go. You, you, you well, got so 20 it's not seconds, actually process. That's it. It's just uh, your, your, your non-believer in NFTs and crypto. Right. Copy. Okay, let's okay. move on. Are we done? Yes. We're done. <laughs>